morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope that all of you are doing well. So let's get started with this today's webinar. The topic for today is Azure for Data Engineers. Now let's get started. This is the agenda that we have for today, and we are going to talk about all these topics. We will understand that what exactly is Azure, what what is data analytics, what is cloud analytics, benefits, who is the data engineer, uh, the RNR of data engineer, which is roles and responsibilities, the salary ten. As your data engineer, as your uh, skills required for this profile, and the RNR of as your data engineer. So, without wasting much time, let's proceed. Now, let's start here. What is Azure? So, Azure is a cloud service which is being provided by Microsoft. So, it basically provides you the freedom to build, manage, deploy applications on a massive global network. So, you can use your favorite tools and frameworks on Azure platform. Now we have a couple of features on Azure. Let's talk about one by one. The first is on-demand provisioning. On-demand provisioning basically asks for what you need, when you need, and when to stop. Next one that we have is scalability in minutes, which basically asks you when you want to scale up the resources, when you want to scale down the resources, when you want to increase, when you want to decrease. All those kind of management can be done in scalability in minutes. The third one that we have is pay as you consume. So basically, you're going to use only for, in other words, you're going to basically going to pay for only those services that you are uh, consuming. So not like that we are going to charge you for certain services that you have not consumed and we are charging you no you are only going to pay for those services that you have consumed so there is not going to be any kind of an, an, an unethical charges so you are going to be paid for that only next one that we have is abstract resources so wherein we are going to focus only on your needs not of the hardware specifications that you have the next one that we have is efficiency of ex experts so wherein you are going to utilize the skills knowledge and resources of your experts and the last one that we have is measure it. So every unit of usage, like uh, like a unit of electricity, whatever you use, you can basically measure it, right? Like how many units you have uh, measured, like how many uh, units you have consumed, and all. Likewise, in this case, each and every unit is basically measurable. You can basically see that if I got charged for this, why I got charged, and uh, what was the need of it, all those kind of things can be tracked easily. So you're going to have the entire management with you only and with the help of all the tools which is being available in the Azure. You will be able to have entire those things or entire those control with you. So these are the couple of Azure features that we have. Now talking about what is data analytics. So data analytics refers to the techniques to analyze data to enhance productivity and business gain. Like in this case, we have business administration and we are going to explore data analysis, which eventually is going to increase revenue of your business. Now, why data analytics? Uh, we basically get a couple of uh, benefits like yeah, there's the hidden inside the information which are hidden. You can get it. You can try to automate with the help of reports. You can perform market analysis. What is in the market? How, uh, how much coverage is there in the market? The entire thing. And uh, you can try to improve your business requirement as well. Now, coming to what is cloud analytics? Cloud analytics is a service that run data analysis and uh, business intelligence operation in a public or private cloud. Cloud analytics companies help enterprise scale quickly by reducing the cost and administrative burden of on-premise hardware. Now, talking about the different types of uh, analytics that we can have, basically first is the public cloud. Now, uh, all of you must be using a public facing network, right? Like I'm using my, um, you know, Gmail and all. So the services that I'm uh, using right now is basically my access like that I'm uh, using right now. Like I can try to perform the action. I can try to do all those kind of things that basically falls into your public cloud. Wherein your storage and data processing is going to be publicly available on multi tenant architecture that shares IT systems, but not data. Second is a private cloud, which is going to be your own dedicated cloud where you know, it's going to be accessible only to one company and act as an extension for the company's IT infrastructure. So it's used when data privacy and security is paramount. Last is a hybrid, which is combination of both for public and private cloud and most effective when only a small amount of sensitive data need to be in private cloud. Now we get certain benefits uh, in this. The first is a flexibility. So when companies have rapidly changing needs, the business intelligence tools of cloud analytics offer um, quick access to your real-time data which allows for faster and more uh, accurate decisions cloud-based analytics service also make it easier to scale when enterprises aren't tied to expensive and less flexible on-premise solution so that's why it's like much more flexible next one uh, that we have is a scalability and agility 
So basically, scalability in volume from users and data is one of the advantage of cloud analytics. Cloud computing can enable the abilities to add data storage and data analysis capacity as needed, where I can add it, I can remove it. So uh, whatever the kind of uh, requirement I have, I can just uh, you know make the changes. Even I can configure auto scaling as well wherein something is going to be scale up automatically depending on the requirement so it's going to scale up scale down depending on like your requirement like for example if i'm going to say that at 12 am increase these resources so at every 12 am it's going to increase your resources at uh, after that if i'm going to say that at 12 pm decrease the resources so it's going to decrease the resources at 12 pm so uh, wherein you can just, you basically can just have such kind of requirement and based on that it's going to increase or decrease the resources now third one that we have is data consolidation so as of uh, basically in today's world we have a massive amount of data and you know that data is crude oil so cloud computing data analytics uh, allows enterprises to consolidate data and better understand the information of the process so even though if you have the data from a different process you will be able to understand that data and you will be able to access the data out so wherein you are going to have that complete flexibility you will be able to make the changes you will be able to access it if i want to import data in a various form from various sources it's going to support that as well so you're going to have that complete flexibility with you wherein you can just try to have the complete control uh, in your hands and you will be able to try to have entire control in your hand whenever you want to create it whenever you want to do it you will be able to make all those kind of changes now that was all about the benefits that we uh, get now let's basically have a fair understanding and let's uh, basically just try to understand that what exactly is data uh, or engineer you know what is the functionality of it what it does let's just try to get understanding so first of all who is a data engineer so uh, data engineer is the one who develops construct test and maintain the complete architecture of the large scale processing system so wherein it's going to set up the data pipelines, it's going to inject data from various sources and it's going to streamline the process. What are the different skill set that we need here? Basically, the person who is want to become a data engineer should have advanced programming knowledge, uh, basically have uh, Hadoop-based analytics and in-depth knowledge of SQL, should have knowledge about machine learning concept, about data architecture, data warehousing and all. Now, the roles and responsibility is the person who is going to be in this field will be responsible to develop, test, maintain architectures, to develop data set processes, to deploy machine learning, statistical methods, and predictive and uh, prescriptive modeling as well. Now, talking about salary trend, as an average individual, you can get a salary of $92,298 per month, sorry, per year in US, and in India, you can get approximately 8.3 lakh rupees every year. Now let's take a look at a social learning at Edureka. So if you're going to take a course from Edureka, how the entire structured learning is going to look like. So like I said, we don't only focus on the theoretical part. We also focus on the practical part where we make sure that what are the practicals that we, you know, we are going to perform all those kind of things you are going to have uh, available on our website. At the same time, we have also publicized the course, the contest, each and everything that we are going to, uh, you know, perform on the entire, uh, uh, you know, session. What kind of training structure is going to look like? What the topics are going to cover? What are they going to be the practicals? Each and everything at very granular level in detail, we basically have documented. So you can go on our website, which is basically drega.co. You can just try to get the entire information out of from here. So in the first class, you will learn about what is Microsoft Azure Architect. You are going to uh, learn about its component, its subcomponents with the practical hands-on. In the second class, you will learn about Azure Virtual Machine and networking. What is Azure Virtual Machine? You know, what are the different components of it? What kind of drives you can have? All those kind of things you are going to learn. And after that, uh, uh, we are going to perform some practical hands-on, how you can create the um, network, because uh, people have one of the biggest myth that since it is going to be a public network, and uh, since this is a cloud, you will not be able to create your own profile. Like when I say this is a cloud solution. So being the cloud, you, uh, people think that I cannot create my own network, that I can create my own premises, my internal networks, everything, right? Which is not true. Uh, it is possible. You can create it out. So cloud doesn't mean that it's going to restrict it, that we are going to learn how you can basically create your own networks, how we basically you can create private cloud, public cloud, basically what can, what is a virtual network means, what is a virtual network group, virtual security groups, all those kind of things you're going to learn. After that, uh, in the third class, you are going to learn about Azure VMSs, uh, what is Azure uh, Virtual Machine Scale Set, what exactly it means, what are the scalability zones, all those kind of things that you are going to learn. 
after the end of the fourth class you're going to learn about azure app services what exactly uh, you know azure app services means at the same time uh, what are different components of azure app services all those kind of things you are going to get a fair understanding on it and at the same time what is the logic app what is the function app what is the difference of it what is the serverless environment we are going to perform uh, certain practicals and you're going to have a thorough uh, i would say uh, clarity on it after that in the next class you are going to learn about azure hybrid connectivity site recovery what that is how you can configure how you can basically kind of create the relay and everything with the practical hands-on then in the sixth class you will learn about azure storage solution and design patterns so basically in the case of azure it supports um, uh, four type of uh, uh, you know storages blob file queue table so you're going to get a um, you know clarity on all those kind of things in detail how uh, basically that is configured and how you can configure the difference between all those kind of different storages uh, and you know how basically you can decide that you which is best or which is not best all those kind of uh, things you're going to get a fair understanding in the seventh class you're going to learn about azure kubernetes service what is a docker what is kubernetes the difference between them when to use what with the practical hands-on in the eighth class you're going to learn about uh, azure active directory role based access control what that means and its components of component in the ninth class you will learn about azure monitoring inside services basically if i want to perform monitoring how basically i can uh, perform the monitoring on it so all those kind of components of components you're going to get a fair understanding in addition to that we are uh, going to perform certain practical sessions where you're going to get the complete understanding about each and everything then after that in 10th class you're going to learn about azure design migration basically uh, how you're going to design uh, the migration of azure let's say if i have which is going to be very common nowadays i have a requirement i want to migrate from on premise to azure and i want to migrate from uh, azure to on premise how can i do it so all those kind of things you are going to have a greater clarity on it like basically you can decide that how you can migrate how you can basically perform migration what are different components going to be and uh, what are the different utilities that Azure is providing? You are going to have that country, uh, you know, complete control uh, and complete clarity on it, so that if you have uh, any kind of opportunity in your organization, you can just perform that migration out. And at the end, you are going to become a superhero like a cape. You know, I mean, it's going to be like a superhero. You will have a cape as well, but that is more of a something. Um, uh, so you're not going to become a superhero of a knowledge. Okay. Now we got a fair understanding. So what exactly is a data engineer? All those kind of things. So we are going to basically talk about what exactly is ADE, what exactly is uh, Azure Data Engineer. So we will talk about it. Azure Data Engineer design and implement the management, monitoring, security, and privacy of uh, data using full stack of Azure Data Services to satisfy the business needs. Now, what are the skills required for Azure Data Engineer? Let's talk about it. So these are different uh, skills that we require like understanding the evolving data, you know data landscape You should have that knowledge. You should under have a fair understanding, you know of uh, Understanding the different use cases we have we should have a knowledge about evolution of data system and their influence You should have a um, you know like have a fair knowledge What is the difference between on-premise and cloud solution? These are the basic skills that you require now the certification that you needed for a uh, job in Azure data engineering so in this case, basically, you know, if we talk about the certification path involves two different exams meant for uh, testing different capabilities of Azure Data Engineer. The two uh, Azure uh, Data Engineer certification exams are DP200 and DP201. The next is RNR of uh, Azure Data Engineer. So being uh, an Azure Data Engineer, you have to work with external parties to bring their data into the organization, to have it maintained on the cloud, to design, maintain, and update database schemas, to work with external resources on large projects, to collaborate with you know technical team for troubleshooting different kind of issues. These are some of the common uh, skills that you require. Now coming on the most uh, good part about the salary. In US, if you are, the average uh, salary of a uh, US person is going to be $150,000 sorry and for Indian it's going to be almost 7.3 lakhs per annum now learning path for Azure data engineer if basically I talk about um, you start with Azure storage services what that is then you move on to Azure database services then you move on to uh, tools what is Microsoft BI stack and then the programming skill so basically in the case of Azure storage services you're going to learn all different type of uh, four different type of storages like I said blob file queue table you have to decide that in which scenario you have to use what all those kind of things you're going to learn 
after that in the case of database services you are going to learn about different type of databases that is your supports how basically you can have the database as a service with azure because azure provides you the feature where you don't need to install a virtual machine configure a database it basically provides you database as a service so directly you can have that feature so with the database as a service you basically can create manage and uh, handle database without maintaining any kind of raw uh, system like virtual machine and everything so you are going to get that entire control in your hands and uh, after that uh, in the like uh, third you're going to learn about different tools like what are different tools which are basically required what is a tableau power bi analytics uh, how basically you can use these tools and uh, how basically uh, these tools can make uh, the job easier uh, how basically these tools can be used for visualization all those kind of things in detail you are going to learn and then after that uh, in the fourth you're going to learn about uh, what exactly is microsoft uh, you know bi stack its subcomponent what is SSIS, SSRS, SSAS, SQL Server, and then last one you want to learn about uh, basically Python skills. You know Python, R, what that is, um, all those kind of thing. So that was all about today, guys. Thank you, and wishing all of you a great evening ahead.